what is Kiosk Kitchen? Kiosk Kitchen is changing the way that people think about what they eat and where they get it from. And we're doing that by providing chef prepared, nutritious meals from an innovative dining kiosk. So during today's pr presentation, I'm going to outline several different things about what the idea behind Kiosk Kitchen is and the stellar team that's uh, making it happen. But my hope is outside of all of the business stuff, what I want to convey is why this solution is so much bigger than just serving meals and why it's my mission and purpose to serve and make an impact, not only here in Florida, but in communities across the country. Because to put it simply, I know what it's like to lose everything and not know where the next meal is coming from. And trust me, I've been there many times. I was a broke chef for many, many years. Uh, you'd think a chef would never go hungry and I can assure you you'd be wrong. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I went from a successful catering and meal prep business uh, to the food stamp line, essentially. And it's with that unique perspective that I was able to recognize a solution and an opportunity, and one that I knew I could solve for millions of other people. <clears throat> but before I get into that and kind of switching gears here, what I'd like to speak to is the industry that we plan to disrupt and why our solution is needed much more than you may even realize. And uh, also kind of tell you a little bit more about what we do best. So we all know the headaches shown here, costly delivery fees and long wait times, not to mention subpar quality, uh, lengthy contracts and price and subscriptions, or just our favorite restaurants closing due to staffing issues. Uh, convenience these days, it, it comes at the mere cost of your health. You, you shouldn't have to choose between fast food and fasting. Uh, these options just aren't sustainable for the health and wellness of our communities. But what if there was a better way to feed ourselves and our families with nutritious food? Imagine getting a delicious, hot, healthy meal packed with nutrition any time of the day or night uh, for less than a drive through run. So no matter your schedule, Kiosk Kitchen is open. Uh, how many of you would love to be able to feed your family in a matter of minutes? Our meals target many different dietary ranges from traditional, keto, paleo, vegan, and vegetarian. Uh, we do also offer gluten-free, dairy-free, and soy-free options. What we're really doing is bridging the gap between restaurant quality offerings and the open access to getting them around the clock and actually having good options that make you feel good. And we wanna share that with everyone that we can. So Kiosk Kitchen differs itself from those earlier headaches by focusing on six key factors, which you can see here. Uh, to give you a little bit about the experience, you simply use the app to check the menu and find a local kiosk. Then you reserve your meal and within minutes of arriving, you can enjoy that perfect meal solution for any busy breakfast, lunch or dinner, day or late night. I've been extremely uh, fortunate to find myself on the path of developing and creating this solution and its offerings. Uh, I've been joined quite serendipitously actually with the people and purpose to make this dream a reality and to do that I call upon our commitment pillars and we operate on very important principles that are kind of the core of everything that we do, every decision we make, and they all have one purpose. And that's to be of service to our community. First, through providing delicious quality options to, to the people. Uh, second, by giving back to the community through our business model. For every three meals sold, we give one back to a family in need. Uh, and then also by being sustainable and environmentally conscious through waste-free production, compostable packaging, and then also utilizing all refrigerants in our kiosks. Uh, most importantly, we're creating a culture within kiosk that promotes uh, Our team has a vast amount of experience, almost 130 plus degrees, and we don't just digital. It's building. Mission. Is a, and I'm a seasoned chef and entrepreneur with extensive knowledge of food and nutritional sciences. And I'm simply committed to pioneering the creation of meals with a purpose. And that purpose is to provide intrinsic value to our communities through good, healthy food. Uh, my 20 years of food service and industry knowledge paired with our growing team's experience, we believe is the perfect recipe to make Kiosk Kitchen a trusted and reliable source and quality food solutions. And, you know, I've never been really good about talking about me. So what I'd like to do here is speak more to our market opportunity. And outside of our business model, which you can see here in our current realized revenue segments, we have goals to target both the public and to this slide after the presentation, if you like as well. 
So you can imagine our kiosks in co-shared and corporate office spaces, bus, plane, train terminals, school campuses, and amenity-based apartment complexes, uh, gyms and quick stay hotels, just to kind of name a few. In order to mitigate our risk and capture our forecasted target demographic, uh, we're committed to just continuing to understand the customer opportunity and being very customer centric. As we continue to scale, we will obviously continue to test, refine and expand our product and experience options. As for what it looks like in our roadmap, our big goal is to have kiosk in full commercialization phase by the end of quarter two, 2023, with uh, approximately 10 kiosks operating in the local market. A long-term goal is to have a target of 50 kiosks operating the St. Pete Tampa marketplace, uh, and that's by end of year 2024. Uh, we also look to have an 8,000 square foot production kitchen that's doing uh, packaging uh, as well as food production. And then lastly, a fleet of carrier and service vehicles across the area to maintain our uh, world-class platforms and food. In the beginning, I told you about my mission. And I have high hopes of building Kiosk to be the ambassador to a solution to solve food insecurity. By fighting the right fight with the right people, we believe we can open up access to millions through our platforms and be a beacon and blueprint of hope for those that need us in their darkest hour. So with that, I wanna thank you all for your time and consideration today. And I trust that you'll allow us to embolden the vision of this uh, amazing uh, company, which is to be innovative, creative and competitive, all while embracing and strengthening our beautiful so with that, please take a second, follow us on social media so you don't miss what's going on. And thank you very much. And I'd happily like to answer any questions you guys may have. That's exactly what I had in the room. Any questions at all that you may have for AJ? I've got one. Uh, Patrick? Um, I might have I might have missed it, and this might be a dumb question. So, are you setting up a kiosk in different places that has food that's already prepared, or are you setting up a kitchen in certain like high traffic areas, or or or, or is it delivery? Or I I, I might have missed it, like I said. So I'm I'm happy asking a dumb question. Not a problem. No, there's no such thing as a dumb question, Michael. So essentially to give you a, a kind of a, a high mile overview, what these are is they're satellite dining kiosks. They are essentially smart vending machines. Uh, we've got some proprietary technology built on board, but they hold about 100 pre-prepared meals uh, at a very fixed temperature point uh, that allows us to cook them in just under three minutes, but doesn't compromise quality of the food that's in them. Uh, th think of them as chef prepared restaurant quality meals that are essentially prepackaged and pre-prepared uh, and given to you at kind of the highest execution point that we can through the smart vending technology. And they are an in the marketplace solution. So like I said, starting with 10 kiosks in our pilot market, we look to have them in the metropolitan marketplace here in St. Petersburg, but we look to expand into the Southeast corridor and up into your neck of the woods as well. And then also down into South Florida. Uh, but if you can imagine, it's, it's, it's an, essentially an intelligent vending kiosk that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's a great answer. That is, that was kind of what I was thinking. I've seen the ones they make pizza and they have ones that make spaghetti kind of right in front of you and stuff. So um, great answer, right. concise, clear. I get it. Thank you. Yep. I have a question too. Patrick, go ahead. Um, so similar to Michael's question is, um, do you, so location, location, location comes to mind, which is so exactly what is your profile of the best optimized location setting? Are these in grocery stores? Are they next to red boxes? <laughs> what is your strategy in terms of deploying and defining the best location? So as I outlined in the, uh, in the presentation, we've identified at least five of kind of those critical customer access points. Uh, so it would be corporate and co-shared workspaces, anywhere that has high visibility, high traffic, and then also bus, plane, train terminals, uh, as well as factories, school campuses. Uh, and then we've also had requests from other smaller venues that don't currently have F&B operations or food and beverages. So quick stay motels, or sorry, quick stay hotels, kind of your deskless millennial uh, projects. So True by Hilton, uh, Hyatt Place, anywhere that has a high occupancy, but doesn't have an in-house food and beverage operation. Uh, and then also there's kind of an onboard technology 
built into the machines themselves, which is, it, it captures non-sensitive biometric data. And what it'll allow us to do is really adapt and pivot to those best suited critical customer access points once we've developed through our pilot uh, series, which again, will be those first five to 10 kiosks located in uh, you know, a diversified set of locations and really allowing us to find that pure market fit. And to follow up to that is because I've been in this industry with different kinds of products and bending equipment, if you will. What's your location commission strategy in terms of cost driver? AJ, your signal froze up for a second. Did you hear me? Uh, I'm hearing you now. I'll drive through that spot. Yeah, if you could please repeat that last question, I do apologize. I'm having some connectivity issues here, it seems. Yeah, okay. So the question is location commissions. Most of the this kind of industry setup is the location where the device is placed, it's gonna take a revenue share. So what's, what's that look like in your financial model? Uh, currently, we're, we're throwing a few different options around and we're basically trying to adapt those to the, um, to the market demand. Uh, we haven't nailed any particular commission rate or percentage-based revenue um, payout yet. Uh, but again, we're, we're continuing to develop that and we will probably refine that more once we have the first five to 10 kiosks in place uh, through the pilot series. Okay. Very good. Jay, you have a question? Great question, thank you. Great presentation. A um, couple quick questions for you. Sure. Uh, you're talking about having to do it's basically meal ready, but you put together kind of a pre prep. Do you guys require to have a commissary to do the, the prep before you put the you know, the product in before finishing? And yeah, so it's go ahead. I was, I was, I apologize, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt there. I... Um, so it's essentially a centralized production hub and think of it as a hub and spoke. So the kiosk will be uh, locally, or sorry, locally serviced and stocked daily from our centralized production kitchen, uh, which is where everything will be uh, sourced and then prepared, packaged, and shipped out to each individual kiosk. So what's your, uh, staff, what's your staffing? requirements then for say you know your, your hub and then we'll say uh, just a magic number 10 kiosks I'm, I'm, i do apologize can you repeat that last bit since you have a commas since you're basically going to have a commissary for the prep work um and, and you're doing it as a hub style yeah. how many what's your manning requirement going to be how many how many people are you going to have to have to prepare the food at the hub and then deliver to say 10 kiosks? Uh, if we're talking about 10 kiosks, we're utilizing kind of fixed production models. So I'm taking a lot of this from my experience, you know, 20 years experience as a chef. So we're lo looking to utilize kind of the fixed production models, much like a catering company does. So as we continue to scale, as our power levels increase, obviously staffing will increase with that. So for say 400 meals a day, we're looking at, you know, two occupant cooks plus one uh, overseeing manager, as well as a delivery and logistics person. Uh, and then as we continue to scale through those 10 kiosks at 14% sales, we're looking at, you know, probably staff anywhere between three to five people uh, in a 4,000 square foot kitchen as we move into phase two and into that 8,000 square foot space. Uh, but again, it, it, it's all going to be about adaptability and being able to pivot based on those par levels, demand, uh, and so forth. So I'm, I'm, I'm confident that with the experience that, you know, the team has, uh, we'll be able to adapt to that, keep it as lean as possible to allow us to really be able to focus the, uh, you know, profitability and the funding that we do have in the right directions. So. Jim, could I ask one one last question? Um, let's hold that one question. Okay. Uh, AJ, we really appreciate your time. Brian, do we have one question that we need to ask AJ before he goes? Uh, yes, uh, the question we have for you, AJ, is what can we do as a community to help you out? Well, as a 1 million cups community, first of all, I want to thank you guys for having me. Uh, it's great to be able to uh, be in front of the Pensacola area. Uh, but basically the only thing that, you know, we as Kiosk uh, Kitchen would, would ask is, you know, recommend us to anybody who may want one of these 
uh, kiosks in their location, or if there's anyone that you think that we should speak to in regards to potentially partnering or creating synergy with. Uh, we're really looking to expand our partnerships. We're looking to expand conversations and dialogue with those uh, people and locations. And essentially what we're trying to do, like I stated in the, uh, in the presentation, is we want to align ourselves with the people, uh, the places and the purpose to be able to, to continue moving forward this mission, which is essentially just opening up healthy access to everyone. So uh, like I said, you know, the, uh, the links are in the chat. You know, I welcome anyone. If you have somebody that you think would benefit from a conversation or do you think that, you know, we should be speaking to, please, uh, you know, I love to, to take all meetings and I love to speak to people and I love engaging and uh, I'm happy to open a line of dialogue with any and everybody. So 